Hello children, I am Sunandini Chekam, School Assistant Bioscience in GHS Burkham Park. Now, uh, in the first chapter, we have seen how the food is digested in the stomach. The end products are glucose, amino acids, uh, fatty acids, etc. In second chapter, we have seen respiration of gases. However, this digested food, gases and liquids that we take are to be transported to each and every cell of our body. And let us see today the circulatory system that is transportation of these materials in our body. And uh, in all living organisms, they may be say unicellular or multicellular, the food, liquids and gases must be transported or supplied to each and every cell. In unicellular organisms like amoeba, it takes place by diffusion and osmosis. In multicellular organisms, these substances have to be transported to longer distances, especially in plants which are around 100 feet per tall, they have, there is a need of a special transportation system for uh, transport of water and etc. In multicellular organisms a separate system is organized and it is known as the circulatory system and uh, uh, when uh, you are sick you might have uh, observed doctors holding your wrist with their index and middle fingers and observing telling that you have some uh, uh, temperature etc you can also observe it keep your index and middle fingers on your wrist uh, below the thumb and uh, you can feel something pushing your fingers rhythmically and this rhythm would be 70 t 72 to 80 times uh, per minute uh, in the as shown in the picture you can observe the pulse and it is called as a pulse rate and it is similar to the heartbeat. Here uh, you can observe in the tab tabular form uh, given in your textbook. Uh, see here Lalita, Rakesh and Teja are the three persons whose pulse rate per minute is observed at rest and after jogging. Lalita's uh, pulse rate is uh, 72 at rest and uh, 98 after jogging. Rakesh pulse rate is 75 and after jogging it is 102. Teja's uh, 80 at rest and after jogging it is 110. So uh, what did you observe? Is the pulse rate same in both conditions? No. At rest, the pulse rate is less and after jogging it is more. Uh, this pulse rate and heartbeat can be compared. And uh, uh, you can also make uh, an indicator on your own. Uh, take an injection bottle's uh, cork and uh, pierce it with a needle and uh, or with a matchstick and uh, hold it on, the, on your wrist. It will just move to indicate your pulse rate and uh, this small activity we can do at your home and uh, as I told earlier there is a relationship between pulse rate and heart beat and uh, if uh, you see the pulse rate of uh, different uh, people at the, of different ages as in the tablet form given in your textbook of a newborn baby it is 100 to 150 times per minute in infants of 3 to 6 months uh, 90 to 120 in infants from 6 to 12 months the pulse rate is 80 to 120 in children from 1 to 10 years the pulse rate is 70 to 130 in children over uh, 10 years and adults including senior citizens it is 60 to 100 times and uh, a well-trained adult athletes it is 40 to 60 as you observe as the age increases the pulse rate also decreases. In 
1816 René Lenac invented the stethoscope and uh, he used paper tube to hear the heartbeat and later uh, it is uh, prepared by using a bamboo stick and uh, a paper tube is also used and he called it as the stethoscope and nowadays doctors are using the advanced stethoscope all these things are used to know the heartbeat of the person so you come it came to know that the circulatory system includes heart and the blood vessels which pump the blood heart blood vessels and blood are involved in circulatory system and heart is the main pumping organ of the circulatory system now let us see the external structure of the heart and internal structure of the heart in detail heart is a pear shaped structure triangle in outline wider at the anterior end and narrower at the posterior end the heart is covered by two layered membrane this is called pericardium the space between these two layers is filled with pericardial fluid which protects the heart from shocks the heart is divided into four chambers the upper two chambers are called atria or auricles and lower two ones are called ventricles the upper right part is the right atrium and this is right ventricle this is left atrium this is left ventricle in the right atrium we can observe the opening of superior vena cava and inferior vena cava superior vena cava brings impure blood that is deoxygenated blood from upper part of the body inferior vena cava brings deoxygenated blood from lower part of the body and in the left atrium we can observe the opening of pulmonary veins pulmonary vein this is also pulmonary vein brings blood from lungs from the upper part of right ventricle arises pulmonary artery it supplies deoxygenated blood to the lungs aorta arises from the left ventricle it supplies oxygenated blood to all parts of the body and here we can see the blood vessels supplying blood to the heart muscles and they are called coronary vessels this is the external structure of heart internal structure of heart consists of chambers of the heart the right atrial chamber left atrial chamber right ventricular chamber left ventricular chamber and the two atria are separated by interatrial septum the two ventricles are separated by interventricular septum the right atrium and ventricle are separated by a septum which is guarded by a tricuspid valve and left atrium and ventricle are separated by a septum which is guarded by a bicuspid valve which is known as a mitral valve 
and uh, the openings of the pulmonary artery and the aorta are guarded by three seminula valves and these valves are uh, crescentic in shape and the valve which guards the pulmonary artery is called pulmonary valve and the valve which guards the aorta is called the aortic valve now let us see in detail in detail if we see the right atrium the left atrial chamber right ventricular chamber left ventricular chamber between the two atria interatrial chamber septum inter atrial septum between the two ventricles interventricular septum between the right atrium and right ventricle there is a tricuspid valve you can see the three cusps between the right atrium and right ventricle between the left atrium and left ventricle there is a bicuspid valve it is also known as mitral valve and uh, here the valves are connected with the muscles of the heart by means of chordae tendinae you can see here the chordae tendinae the lengthwise chordae tendinae these are connected to the heart muscles and they help in the contraction and relaxation of the valves of the heart here the pulmonary artery is at its beginning is guarded by pulmonary valve and the aortic aorta is guarded by aortic valve aorta is guarded by aortic valve as they are crescent shaped they are also known as semi lunar valves here you can see these are the uh, valves aortic valve pulmonary valve and uh, these are th this is the tricuspid valve and this is the bicuspid valve of the heart we see the atrial wall is thinner atrial wall is thinner and the ventricular walls are thicker if we compare the left ventricular wall with right ventricular wall the wall of left ventricle is thicker than the wall of right ventricle left ventricle has to pump blood to all parts of the body through aorta children let us see the cardiac cycle in next video and in this part we get questions like write about the external structure of heart write about the internal parts of heart compare tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve what happens if valves fail to function you may also be given a diagram and locate the external and internal parts of heart so students prepare well and now uh, be ready to watch the transportation part 2 video about the cardiac cycle